Let's talk about web development. Uh, clearly an important topic, uh, but it's interesting to reevaluate what topics are really interesting for web development. And what does it mean today to be a web developer and what are the characteristics of that? Okay? Because we of course still have ASP.NET for server-side web development, mostly in the sense when we say ASP.NET, uh, we of course mostly talk about generating HTML on the server. Although, of course, also services and stuff like that. Um, but then we have a lot of HTML5-based development on the client, and there's several frameworks that are very viable. This is a large, large audience we're talking about here. Um, what I see as one of the clear winners that most people use, that we talk to, and that most people are excited about, is Angular 2. All right, so that seems to be something that's coming out as the clear winner in that. But we also see that there are strong secondary contenders. Uh, React is one, for instance, that a lot of people seem to use. Certainly also has critical mass and has several others. Then, of course, there's Node.js for server-side development. So when you look at that, then it's like, well, how much HTML are we going to create server-side exactly? That's dynamic HTML. All right, if I have an Angular app, that's, say, my CRM app that I built for myself. Uh, that runs in HTML, um, CSS, JavaScript. It calls services for the data, but it's probably not going to do a lot of dynamic HTML generation on the server. Okay? So in that sense, ASP.NET MVC, for instance, uh, is certainly not as important anymore. We just don't do as much server-side development anymore. Right? How important is it to have, I don't know, server-side controls? Well, less than it used to be. But it's not completely gone away because there are certainly scenarios where you want to do exactly that. Amazon.com is probably not going to be rewritten as a single-page app. You, know, you go there and the loading indicator spins for the first minute. Oh, now our whole store is loaded. Right? I don't see that so much. Or take our business with the magazine. Now we have articles online, of course, and you go to a URL and it shows that article. I'm not going to do that as a single page app that spins up all this stuff and uh, you know, can't be indexed really well and things like that. So there are certainly scenarios where we still do the old jump from URL to URL type of scenario. But at the end of the day, that scenario has a little bit diminished. And really what we're talking about here is that a lot of these spa apps, these single page apps, they have taken on the characteristics of a rich client application. Right? What we used to do with view models and, and, and SAML code or whatever you used on, in your Windows app, we're now doing with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript or TypeScript on the client. But the kinds of things we're doing are very similar. Okay? So that's how that has changed. So that, of course, totally changes the importance of ASP.NET. Um, but nevertheless, like I said, there's still lots of scenarios where we want to do server-side HTML generation. We already talked about why .NET Core had to be rewritten, had to be reimagined. Well, that originated a lot with ASP.NET, right? because those were the guys who felt the pain, the pain first. The, the ability to deploy ASP.NET apps to a server and how big was that footprint and was there versioning problems and why can't we do it on anything other than IIS and so on. And to get beyond that, they had to completely start over because there was a huge dependency on IIS with system.web and, and all of that. So now we have that version out. It does a lot of stuff. It's starting to get a lot more stable. Still missing a bunch of features that are coming more and more. But, but that's, it's certainly come a long way. And the way I would, uh, the character I would give this is, like I said, if you're building a new app and you understand what this does and you know what you need, evaluate that a little bit first. But if it fits your needs, now that's a really nice and stable platform. But honestly, we are not going, like, like our own site, our Code Magazine site, it's written in, in regular ASP.NET MVC, full framework version, not the new stuff. I have no need to actually go out and change that. Um, so you know, weigh your, your needs. Uh, on the other hand, for instance, the stuff we're doing with our genetics business, well, a lot of that runs on Linux, so it's nice to have .NET Core, and we had special reasons to go that route. But we ran into limitations, like the, the encryption namespace wasn't available. Well, now what do you do? Write a service using the old framework that does encryption for you, right? It's just kind of uh, not entirely there yet, but we're certainly getting a lot closer. And, a lot of stuff has been moved out. 
Um, I'm not going to go into a sample here. Uh, from what I understand, you guys already had uh, ASP.NET Core presentations here. I want to talk a little bit about the version numbers. That always gets people confused. ASP.NET Core used to be called vNext or v5. Uh, it caused a lot of people to think they're using MVC5, therefore they're using the new version. Like, no, MVC5 goes with the full framework. MVC6 is the version that goes with dot, what we now call .NET Core. And when you access data, you're probably going to use Entity Framework 7, right, just to make things a little more confusing. So we still kind of keep the old tradition of Microsoft odd naming conventions. Right? Um, so, so that's kind of how that works there. I'm going to skip over this relatively quickly. I'm going to give you in, in the show notes uh, further links for a lot of this stuff. So I'm going to skip over this relatively quick. HTML, we already talked a lot about that. Uh, a few of the frameworks that seem to be out there, like I said, if it's not number one, it's still a very big space. So we have customers that, that use the, the Facebook React framework, are very happy with it, find a lot of people. Uh, there's others like Amber and, and so on. But Angular 2, we see as the clear winner. And I have uh, downloads for some sample apps for them. I'm not going to go into that here today. Uh, there's also an Angular hack day here the next two days, from what I understand, although I believe that really is sold out. But uh, uh, that happens, I think, twice a year. So keep your eyes out for that. Highly encourage you to take a look at that.